Yes, it is once upon a time again. Listen up, Jack. Big B is in total charge of you while Rose and I are gone this week. Don't give him any trouble. Oh, Jack won't give me any trouble, Snow. Or I'll just keep adding to his community service hours. You can't do that, Big B! Try me, Mulchhead. He can, and he will, with my blessing. Until you work off the last of your punishment, Jack, you belong to us, body and soul. Don't even try testing it, or dark judgment will come down on you like the wrath of God Almighty. We'll be fine. You and Rose enjoy your road trip. And put us entirely out of your mind. That's another thing. Rose and I got the same punishment. Why does she get to work off her hours going on a nice vacation while I have to pull janitorial duty alongside the inbred geek? Hey, don't be so mean. Rose won't be going anywhere if she doesn't hurry up. Nothing personal, Flycatcher. There you are. You'd be inbred too if you had to marry inside your own family for 20 generations. Count yourself lucky you didn't hold on to your princely title more than a day. Why aren't you packed yet? We're already running late. I am packed, sister dear. This is it. For an entire week? I travel light. Have fun. Be careful. Don't kill each other. Hey, hey Rosebush, aren't you going to... She didn't even say goodbye. She looks like I wasn't even here. That's because, for all of her jerky ways, Rose is still a bright girl. Smart enough to finally realize you have the stink of loser all over you, Jack. Now get back to work. And when you're done with this, strip and wax the ballroom floor upstairs. Flycatcher is in charge. Why does he get to be the boss? Because I said so. And I have the experience to be boss. I do this work all the time. I know what needs to be done. What's your story anyways, Fly? Why are you always stuck on community service? Big B keeps catching me eating flies in public. It's not many hours punishment for each offense, but it adds up. So why is it that I get to go on this trip with you rather than do real work? Since when do you play favorites? Since I decided to see, after all these years of snipping at each other, if we might be able to work out our differences. Good morning, Miss White. Miss Red? Grand day, isn't it? But I don't want to go back to the farm. I'm a city pig. I'd like to see if it's at all possible for us to get back to acting like sisters again. Too bad, Colin, me lad. You're going, and that's that. I thought we were buddies, Johnny. I'm tying him tight, Miss White. He won't get loose again. You can count on that. So this trip is going to be like one long encounter session with each other. Bearing our souls, airing our grievances, inventing our spleens, talking things out like civilized girls. Something like that. I'd rather push a mop. You're ready to go, ladies. She's all gassed up. Watch the radiator water, though. She overheats. Too bad, Rose. Your punishment for faking your own murder is whatever I decide it is. Get in. You can sulk just as well on the road. Have a good time! This is going to suck. You might as well try to enjoy this, Rose, because you're not getting out of it. Twice a year, I have to go upstate to check on the Fabe community at the farm. It's not a vacation, it's work, and you're going to help. You can be happy or miserable, but by God, you'll still do the work. Where are we? Are we there yet? Please, don't smoke in here. I mean it, don't you dare light that. Too late. Might as well get comfortable, Rose. It looks like we'll be here for a while. Oh, joy. Hours of dull waiting followed by more tedious hours on the road. You picked a good punishment for me after all. How much longer until we reach your damned farm? Are you kidding me? In all the years, centuries, we've lived here in New York. You've never once bothered to visit the upstate community? We've been on the farm's land the past 20 miles. 
We like to keep it remote up here, far away from prying eyes. Our strongest distraction spells are woven to prevent the Mundies from even getting curious about this area. Curious, indeed. What are you doing, Snow? Calm down, I'm looking for something. Gathering nuts for the winter? Can't we just pour some bottled water down the radiator and go? I'm bored enough on the road, but this is worse. Rose, look at this. Spent brass casings from bullets and shit. Big deal. There's gotta be all sorts of gun nuts way out here in the sticks. Not here. Anywhere else, but never here. There are lots more shotgun shells and bullet casings scattered in there, but our protective spell should be keeping the Mundies out of our woods and were close enough to the farm that any shooting had to be overheard. So what? So, they've got a direct phone line from the farm to my office. Why didn't anyone report this? Come on, the motor should be cool enough now to make it the rest of the way. Maybe the piggies and horsies declared war on the duckies and moo cows? Wow, so this is the famous farm. I'm impressed, sis. Sort of like Old MacDonald meets Walt Disney meets Munchkinland. And it also looks deserted. Is it supposed to be a ghost town? No, it isn't. Hello? Are we there yet? Yes, Colin, my true love, we are finally there yet. Only it looks like no one else is here anymore. What do you mean? I'm not sure. Apparently everyone here looks forward to my sister's visits as much as I do. Hello? Where is everyone? Hold on. I hear something. Come on. I think I heard voices in the barn. Is anyone home? And furthermore, my fellow gentle species, I say to you the great bard's admonition to take arms against a sea of troubles is more than just a deft turn of phrase. A tasty tidbit of artful speech from a master wordsmith. It shouldn't be treated lightly. As hollow metaphor, but as literal advice, I think we should immediately resolve to... Oh my. Um, hello? Am I interrupting something? It's a raid! The feds are here! I wasn't part of this! I was duped! I'll turn state's evidence! Miss White, what are you doing here so early in the season? I take it this is a town meeting? If so, why is Dunn conducting it and not Waylon Smith? Does someone want to explain what's going on here? Town meeting! Yes, of course that's what it is! All perfectly innocent! Can't do hard time. I'm too delicate. Someone please strangle. Uh, I mean settle. That damned chicken down. In honor of Snow White's surprise visit, I move we postpone the remainder of this meeting so that we can all make her welcome. Why? What have we got to hide? Out of order! Nonsense. A motion to adjourn is always in order. So I hereby declare us adjourned. Meanwhile... I'm sorry, folks, but Snow White is away for a few days. All appointments are postponed until next week. Any emergencies should be directed to Bigby Wolf. Why should we have to wait? Why can't you help us? Not dear. We're entitled to our services, Boy Blue. Is stopped up toilet an emergency? We got rights! If everything's cancelled, then why are you opening the office? I'm just going in to catch up on some filing. Honest. Please, go home. We'll be open again next week. Whew. Well, Buffkin, I see that you've goofed off all day. You didn't restack a single book. Buffkin? Buffkin? Oh no, Buffkin, have you been drinking? That's right, Bubby boy! Damn it, Buffkin, bad, bad monkey! When the catch away, us mice gotta play! Just before the battle, mother. Oh, dear God. Tell me you didn't do it. <laughs> I am thinking most of you. You got the Forsworn Knight drunk again? After the mess last time? And just a bit later. You came up early this year, Miss White. 
And a good thing I did, apparently. Now, don't you think it's about time you told me exactly what I walked into this afternoon? Absolutely, Miss White. Look at all the cozy little piggy things, just like in a real person's house. We are real persons, Miss Red. What was that meeting all about, Don? What else this close to Remembrance Day? It was about how we should march back into our homelands and take them back from the adversary and his hellish minions. You sound almost like your return activist. I am, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'll be damned, and there are others here at the farm? Hundreds. A large majority of us, in fact. Since when? Since before there was an official name for it. Why, Dunn? Posey, how can you seriously abdicate throwing your lives away on a senseless bid to retake the old Fable Lands? Because, unlike all of you down in the big city, we don't look human enough to blithely fit in amongst the Mundies. Whereas you can travel this whole wide world if you've mind to. We're stuck forever, and ever, on this one patch of land. As long as you insist on the laws keeping our true natures hidden from the Mundies, we can't set one foot outside of this prison camp. For fear a talking pig or real living giant would let the cat out of the bag. So to speak. You're both acting ridiculous. The farm isn't a prison. It's a wonderful, thriving, fable community. Ninety cents out of every dollar we take in is spent right here to keep the farm going, Posey. Spend a thousand times more so that we're all immersed in every possible type of luxury, turn this place into a Symbarite's paradise, and it would still be a prison. Because we aren't allowed to leave. And for a fable, a life sentence is a very long time. Centuries for the least of us, millennia so far for some. Okay, fine. I guess I can understand your sympathies, Dunn. But what are your specific plans? We haven't made any yet. That would violate too many of your laws and regulations. They're not my laws. They're our laws. They exist to keep us all safe. So far, we've only talked about general policy, not specific strategy. That's a relief. It's late. Rose and I are going to bed. We can pick this up in the morning. Have a pleasant night's rest. The guest room is all ready for you. Thanks, Posey. Good night. Oh, but just one last thing. Where is Wayland Smith? He left. Resigned. Suddenly. It took us all by surprise. I'm sure it did. Well, that's another thing we'll have to discuss tomorrow. Coming, Rose? What was that all about? Who's Wayland Smith? My opposite number up here. The man who runs the farm. Or who used to, apparently. You should know that. Hour by hour, I'm increasingly horrified by how much you don't know about our community and how willfully determined you seem to be not to know it. I guess that went about as well as could be expected. Do you think she believed us? About not making specific plans yet? Not a chance. But she hasn't got any proof otherwise, and the always correct and proper Snow White won't make a move based only on suspicions. Now, let's deal with you, Colin. It's late, cousins. Shouldn't we get a good night's sleep first? How did your mission in the city go? Did you accomplish the prime objective? Were you able to get a duplicate key to the Woodland Business Office? No, not yet. How many fables did you find who are sympathetic to our cause? Will one of them come through for us? Um, well, you see, Bigby kept me on a pretty short leash, so I wasn't actually able to do much. Only one bed? We have to share the same bed? Space is at a premium up here, Rose. They can't afford to keep more than a single VIP guest room empty. Relax, it's big enough for two, and it's not like we haven't shared a bed before. That was in days long past, and I've since grown out of the habit of sleeping with girls. Except for once every year or so as a special birthday present for Jack. Please spare me the sordid details of your social life. 
Relax, sis. You're safe from me. Even if I could get beyond the incest thing, you're not my type. Are you purposely trying to be disgusting now? The reason for this trip, apart from my semi-annual administrative duties, was so that you and I could work things out. Whatever. How could we have been so close and loving to each other when we were children? Will we be best friends always? Of course. Forever and ever. Only to end up hating the very sight of each other as adults. My sister has the world's biggest stick up her ass. When did it get so ugly between us? When you caught me in bed with your husband, remember? Of course I do, but I think it started before that. Four things, sister dear. One, shut up. Two, turn the light out. Three, close the curtains so I can sleep in tomorrow. Four, I really mean it, shut up. Fine, we can finish this in the... Hey, what's that? What's what? That thing out there by our truck. Oh my god. Oh my god, what have they done? Fuck me blind, I think that's... Oh no. What is it, Rose? What is it? It's poor Colin. It also appears to be a literary reference. My guess is someone wanted to make sure we got a very specific message. Take that disgusting thing down this minute. Who did this, Dunn? I don't know, Miss Red. How could you not? We left him safe and sound with you and Posy last night. I went to bed early, right after you left. He must have gone out again after that. You know how Colin is? Was. He was always sneaking out, looking for adventures. I guess he found a big one. You should have watched him then. Why, we don't do that here at the farm. Unlike you, we don't have to keep our doors locked at night, and, and we don't need someone like Bigby Wolf constantly sticking his snout into everyone's business. You do now. I'm calling him up here to investigate. No, you won't. Not if you want to avoid a riot. A go-by-the-rules princess like you will recall that the upstate Fable Town Charter guarantees that Bigby Wolf will never show his ugly muzzle up here. Never. I believe that's the main reason you folks had to find something useful to do with him down in the city. So what are we going to do about this? You aren't going to do anything, Miss White. But as the duly elected administrator of the farm following Wayland Smith's resignation... I'll conduct the investigation myself, deputizing whomever I need to help me, if and as I need them. That's nonsense. You can't investigate. You're directly involved in the incident. I've learned enough from Big B over the past few weeks to recognize that you and Posy Pig are the chief suspects. You need to watch your place, young missy. And what exactly happened? To Wayland Smith, you never explained that. Sure I did. He quit. He was never much loved up here. And I suppose he finally realized it. Choosing Smith, a fully human-looking fable, to oversee the farm was an outrageous insult. He was a constant reminder of how... how all of you down in the city look upon us up here as second-class citizens. Don't be ridiculous. Waylon was chosen simply because he was the best man for the job. Exactly! The best man! Not the best pig, cow, goat, or dragon! Did you find the rest of his body? Not yet, Miss Red. But we have people out looking. In the meantime, I think you and I should have a little chat. About what? I could sense during our conversation last night that you were sympathetic to our cause. As long as the adversary remains in control of our lands, we'll never be safe. And absolutely, we'll never be free. I guess so, Posey, but what can we do? Our lands were taken from us by force. We can win them back the same way. 
Snow says that's impossible, and I hate to agree with her about anything, but in this case, I have to. What chance do a bunch of farmyard animals, along with a few odd giants, trolls, and other beasts, have against the adversary and his vast armies? We've been working on exactly that problem. And I believe we've solved it. Come with me. I want to show you something... really cool. Elsewhere, but not too far away. There, Goldie. Is that deep enough? It's adequate, Pops. I suppose. No. All we need is for my boo baby to show up with the rest of the pig and we can finish this ugly business. Relax, Mums. We're here. Finally. Then hurry up and dump his head into the grave before someone comes along. We would have been back and done in our beds hours ago if you hadn't insisted on putting his head on display. Yes, Golda dear. Was that stunt really necessary? It was hardly a stunt, and yes, Mums, it was quite necessary. It symbolized that it's time for our revolution to come out of the shadows and begin in earnest. Yeah, Nasty! But did it have to be so bloody and gross and so very public? Absolutely, because now there's no turning back. All the cowardly fence-sitters will finally have to choose sides. Or suffer the consequences. And if you drag your hairy ass into a library once in a while, you'd know the message I sent. The way I sent it was particularly apt. We've been marooned on this island long enough. Any savagery that occurred as a result is a consequence of our unfair imprisonment. Earth to Goldilocks. This ain't no island, babe. Learn your way around the concept of metaphor, boo. And you're hardly stuck here like the rest of us, Goldie. You could move down to the city if you like. Don't you get it yet? After all my doctrinal lectures? When one of us is enslaved, all of us are. Yes, I could move away, but I chose to take my stand here with you. Your cause is my cause. Do you think I share your son's bed only because it happens to be just right? No, it's because Papa's little boo bear is hung like a... I do it because it is a vital and powerful political statement and it symbolizes the fact that we are all equal. There is no superior species, bear, human, or hedgehog, it can make no difference. Even in our most intimate lifestyle choices. Or, we're all oppressors. Or, it could just mean that you've developed a taste for forbidden fruits. Renard! Speciest! Why is it you intense political types insist on living entirely in the symbolic world? What are you doing here? The smell of freshly killed pork called out to me. Oh dear, I left my scorecard in my other pants. But wasn't poor Colin on your side? What happened? Started the inevitable falling out phase of the glorious revolution already? Colin was weak. He failed in his vital mission among the enemy. Those who aren't strong enough are no different from our outright traitors to the cause. And I'm afraid you've seen too much. Yikes! What are you doing, foolish girl? Everyone will hear the shot. So, occupational governments aren't overthrown with speeches alone. You let him get away, old bear. Now we have to hunt him down before he can speak to anyone. Rouse the proletariat. Quickly! And at that very moment... Still think it's impossible, Miss Red? Wow. And a bit later that same day... Has he sobered up yet? How can you tell with him? When I find that damn flying monkey, I'm going to- Don't blame Buffkin, he's got the judgment of a... Well, a monkey. I should have kept a closer watch on him, Bigby. Well, at least the Forsworn Knight hasn't started prophesying yet. As long as he doesn't start any of that, we should be okay. And lo. Oh, shit. There shall be unto them a great upheaval in the land. The children of the North shall make it to Smith. 
The children of the South. What the hell is this nonsense? Is he predicting the Civil War? That's hardly in the future. Not ours, sure. But when did he off himself? Sometime in the 13th century, right? So for him, that would still be stuff yet to come blue. I don't think it works like that. And sister shall take up arms against sister. Hey, is he talking about Miss White and Miss Red? If he is, he's still recycling old news. Those two have been in each other's throats for centuries. This boy is one crappy-ass oracle. And soon thereafter... Finally, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Where have you been all day? Trust me, Snow, you don't want to know. Oh, clever me, I'm a poet. What the hell is it you're looking for? My keys. The truck keys, to be exact. I can't find them anywhere. You won't. What do you mean by that? Try, for once in your life, sister, to rent a clue if you can't come by one honestly. Let me guess, you're looking for the truck keys so that you can drive somewhere to use a phone, because the one and only phone downstairs is as dead as a doornail. Yeah, the service is down. Without Waylon here to make repairs, the whole place is going to hell in a handbasket. Go figure. Are you really capable of such naivete? Will you kindly quit snipping at me and make your point if you have one? Okay, how about this? The phone is dead because they cut the line. The truck keys are missing because they took them. Why? What on earth for? Because Colin's death wasn't the isolated act of a single lunatic. Because they can't afford to let us leave or call for help. Open your fucking eyes, Snow, for Christ's sake! Actually, forget I said that. You'll probably be safer the more you don't notice things. Do yourself a favor and continue playing the dullard for a few days. It should be ridiculously easy for you. What are you up to? Where are you going? Away. I'll be gone for a while. And don't raise a fuss looking for me, either. Wait just a goddamn minute. Come back here. Can't, hun. Gotta scoot. People waiting on me. Remember what I said. Let's go, kids. I'm all yours. Fan out and make some noise. Br'er Rabbit, you take your group that way. Br'er Br'er, swing around and bring your team in front of the other side. We should be able to catch him in a classic pincer movement. Basic tactics. Try to drive him back this way into the open fields where we can get a clear shot at him. Dunn isn't happy about this, Goldie. If you hadn't insisted on putting his head on display- What's done is done. Posey, you can't put shit back in a goose. You and Dunn are in charge of the politics, and that's fine. But as long as Ma and Pa Bear have the ear of the farm's more predatory fable element, and I pull the strings of the bears, I'm the muscle end of our revolution. Now the timetable's in my hands. But we're not ready! We've barely begun the weapons conversions, and the invasion can't go forward until then! Hang the bloody invasion! I never cared one whit about retaking the homelands. Then what is all this fool? Where are you even with us if you don't support- Because when all of you leave this world on your quintoxic quest, someone has to be left in charge to rule Fable Town, both communities, here and in the city. And you? Plan to be that someone? Can you think of anyone more deserving? Don't you two have anything useful to do? This is grown-up talk. Go watch the tree line. Goldie thinks she knows everything. If you were to use a funnel in one of those apothecary pestles to mush it in with... Sure, but you'd have to sedate the goose first. I saw him somewhere around here. I'm sure of it. And I'm sure you need to visit the optometrist. Ka, have you seen him? Not yet, old king, but I have confidence he'll fall into my coils sooner or later. I have the entire Bandolug host scouring the forest. If you expect to get him first, you'd best move out smartly. <laughs> Shh.
Bashir Khan. Bagheera. Any luck? He's close. I'm certain I caught a whiff of him just a minute ago. Do you want me to help search this area? Does the mighty Sultan invite a peasant to share his table? Run along, little partner. Yowie! Do you think I hadn't noticed you back there, Reynard? Mommy! I'll show that aristocratic asshole, Khan, a thing or two. Come back here! Coming through! Don't mind me. You dare! It's almost too easy. Gather around, children! The glorious day has arrived at last! The call has gone out! Arm yourselves! Alright. Cool. About time. Time to rock and roll, baby! Bust some caps in those oppressors' asses. Okay, that's up. Who kept my tats on coaching Magnum rounds? You had him in your Sunday school purse, remember? What the hell is going on? Everyone's acting crazy. Nothing makes any sense. Huh? Snow, let me in. Quick! Raynard, what are you doing skulking outside my window? Hurry! Before someone sees me! You need to get out of here, girly girl. It's no longer safe for you. Rose was spouting the same sort of cryptic nonsense. What's going on? We don't have time. You have to move it or lose it, babe. Some of us are still loyal to you, and I need to get you to them. Before the bad guys give up on hunting me, and remember they've yet to deal with you. Don't pack anything. Make it look like you're planning to come back here. Got everything you need, Miss Red. This ought to do me. Let's go. Is this where the shooting starts, then? Face facts, kid. We lost him. Reynard the Fox slipped through your net. So what? He can't get far. Where would he go? To warn someone. To tell the loyal fables what he saw us do last night. The only fables that matter. The only ones who could stop us at this point are all down in the city, and all contact between here and the city has been cut. What is Reynard going to do? Run all the way there? No, but he could send one of those flying fables with a message. Did you think of that, Goldie? As a matter of fact, I did, Pops. That's why I called them here. Listen clearly, comrades. I want you to establish absolute air supremacy over our lands. Total lockdown. Nothing gets in or out. Understood. Any flying fable who attempts to leave the farm will cease to exist. Count on us. Is that absolutely necessary? Does our revolution begin by making the farm more of a prison than ever before? And all this killing without trials. Don't lose your nerve, Mumsy Bear. You'll have your fill of the show trials before this is over. In the meantime, I remind you about the adage concerning omelets and broken eggs. That's enough of that, Goldie. We've been out here for hours and we're all tired. There's plenty of time for recriminations and second-guessing later. Keep searching for Renard, but rotate your hunters on and off duty, so that we can all get some sleep. The hunt goes on, I see. Careful, Snow. Hawks circling overhead. We should be fine, though, as long as we stay undercover. Lovely. The best way to remain undetected is to find somewhere to curl up and sleep. 
We can't do that yet, sweetie. There are other things in these woods looking for us. Sweetie. I wish you were packing heat to protect us from all the lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Sweetie. Shh! Are you trying to get us killed? Why don't you just start yelling, Here we are! Come eat us! Since when do you get off calling me sweetie? Ever since I didn't wake up blind and stupid every single day of my life, any moron can see that you're one hot babe. And who's more qualified than I am to declare you a total fox? And for the record, I didn't get off yet. But one lives in hope. Show me what you dragged me out here to show me before I lose one of my boots up your presumptuous ass. Fine. It's right this way, your exalted majesty. What happened? What do you think? Cock Robin is dead. Hmm. As I'd hoped. No hunting birds this deep into our lands. They're all searching the borders, assuming we'll make a run for it. So, back to our conversation. In my own defense, since the Rembrandt's Day dance, everyone knows you've been bumping headboards with Bigby Wolf. I most certainly have not! Shh! We're fugitives, remember? You do know what that word means, don't you? Once again, back to the subject. If you're already into Big Bad Wolves, it's just a matter of time before you move up several rungs on the sophisticatory ladder to one Raynard T. Fox Esquire. Two things. Sophisticatory isn't a word, and the only thing that's just a matter of time is that I'm going to strangle you. Yeah, sure. Here we are. Look at this. I found it last night, while running for my life. Finally. What is it? A gun. Specifically, one that's been modified for use by non-human fables. In this case, I suspect it's intended to be a crew-served weapon system. Strap the thing to one Mr. Tortoise for battlefield mobility, teamed with one Mr. Hare for actual operation. But why? Isn't it obvious, Princess? What could they have been thinking? Keep chattering away, tasty morsels. Let me get close. Real close. Maybe that it's better to die gloriously in battle than to continue to live in... than to continue to... Listen up, Highness. You want to figure out what's going on? Then continue hiking over these hills, down through the Valley of the Big Sleepers, and up into the hills beyond. Look for a remote cave there. You can't miss it. What's the matter? Just a little tiger trouble, I think. Oh, shit. Oh my god! Run your pretty ass off, Snow White, while I try to distract Shere Khan. With any luck, we'll meet again, gorgeous. Follow me. Follow me! Hey, you big dummy! You don't want her. You want me! You dare! Oh my. Wow, I forgot. The sight always leaves me breathless. Just then in the big city. Oh dear. Bigby, there's no phone line. And I think they're in trouble. Cock Robin is dead. You're babbling, kid. Slow down, Blue. Take a breath. Come back in and start over.
Okay, well, the direct line connecting us to the farm is dead. So? It's always going out for one reason or another. Sure, but I've been thinking about what Forsworn Knight said yesterday. I'm worried that it actually referred to something dire and eminent involving Miss Red and Miss White. So I tried to call just to reassure myself that things were fine, but the line is down! As usual. Which is why we have to use the message bird so often. Right, so that was my next step. Cock Robin was in the dock for the next flight, and he's awful reliable, but now he's dead. He was killed this morning, almost the very moment he reached the farm. How the hell do you know that? I had the Black Forest Witch put a watching ward on him before he left. Are you out of your mind? You can't authorize that expense. I was worried, and with justification it seems. Something bad is going on up there. Okay, kid. You've convinced me. Since I can't go up there myself, I'll help you round up a posse. Now we're talking. And shortly thereafter, hundreds of miles distant. Did you honestly hope to elude me, human tidbit? Shere Khan! Do you dare imagine that single mouthful on four legs could long delay me? Oh, God! Truth be told, I nearly lost your trail. You shouldn't have paused to piss back there. <laughs> yeah! Ooh, ow! Ooh, ooh! How does it... What do I do? Bitch! Be loaded, dear God, please be loaded, Christ, above what and I think to check. Grind your bones! Mercy. Please? You evil fuck! Right, baby. Keep going. Huh? Hello? I'll be damned. Wayland Smith? Snow White? Is that you? Fancy meeting you here. So what do I owe the pleasure? What are you doing up here? Who did this? Why did you quit the farm without telling anyone? I quit? Really? I can't imagine why I'd do that, but if you say so... Back away from the prisoner, sister. Huh? Rose? What the hell? You led us quite the merry chase, sis. But all's well that ends well, as they say. Quit making speeches, Rose. And do what we're here to do. Snow White, by order of the ruling council of the Fable's revolutionary authorities, I place you under arrest for crimes against Fable kind. Rose, what the hell are you doing? Placing you under arrest for crimes against Fable kind. Who said anything about arresting her? Shoot the oppressor! That wasn't our deal, Goldilocks. My condition for joining you is that you let Snow White live, at least long enough to stand trial. We don't have time for show trials now, and we can't leave her free to continue to sow her mischief among the loyalist scum. Put a bullet in her head so we can get on with our glorious work. Or, if you don't have the stomach for it, stand aside and I'll do it. Forget it, girly. We had a deal. Yes, we did. And we still do. But Goldie's right in that we don't have time for this now. I agree. We've yet to cement our control over the farm, much less implement a takeover of the city of Fabletown. 
We'll chain up Snow White here, alongside Wayland Smith, and she can help him finish the weapons conversions. Excellent compromise, Comrade Dunn. We'll put her to work in aid of the revolution. If she does a good job, we can take that into consideration. Later, when we do have time to try her. Does that suit everyone? Make sure it's set deep. If she gets away again, heads will roll. Rose, how can you be involved in this? How can I not? The Farm Fable's grievances are authentic and long overdue for redress. The revolution was inevitable, Snow. And for once, I plan to be on the right side of things. Let's move out, people. We need to prepare for the noon assembly of the proletariat. Hours pass. Let's go! Can I drive? No. Can I drive? I said no. Can I drive? Shut up! Why can't I drive? Because I'm driving? Because you're a monkey? Because I said so. Take your pick. But I'm a good driver. Ask anybody. Can't anyone shut him up? You have my permission to try. Shoot him if you like. This is already starting out to be one sucky-ass rescue mission. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Okay, I guess. How long was I out? About six hours, I think. I'm not sure. They don't let me have a clock in here. Ready to tell me what happened to you, Wayland? There's not much to tell. I went to sleep one night, in my bed in the farmhouse, and woke up chained here, forced to convert these weapons. Forced how? Some sort of magic gas attached to the chain around my ankle. It not only prevents me from trying to escape, but it compels me to do the work they want. And what happens once they have enough guns converted so that bunnies and goats and chickens can fire them? They'll invade the homelands? Well, that would be my guess. What's that you're working on now? I'm fashioning a key to free you from your shackles. How? I thought... I can't do anything to free myself, but the restriction doesn't cover you. Those amateur barnyard sorceresses didn't think to adjust the spell properly. This should do the trick. Wonderful. Now how do we get you out of yours? I'm sorry, but I can't do anything by word or deed to help you set me free. Well, fine, but do you have to actively prevent me from trying? I don't think so. Okay, that's a start. Will the spell be broken if I get you out of your own chain? I'm sorry, but I can't do anything by word or deed to help you set me free. Crap. All right. Hang on, Wayland. You've got to have something in this mess that I can use to pick the lock or cut the damn thing off you. I hung on to Shere Khan's tail as long as I could, which wasn't very long at all. But he wasn't interested in me. As soon as he shook me off, he went after Snow White again. Did he succeed? Is she dead? I don't know, King Noble. My daily ration of bravery was already used up by trying to distract Khan in the first place. After that, when the tiger went in one direction, I thought it prudent to go in the other. How many of us remain loyal? Not many. The Brer group and the Jungle group are with the other side, along with a few assorted others, but the majority is still straddling on the fence, waiting to see how it all shakes out. Try to find Snow White again. If she's alive, we'll hang on. If not, the best we can do is to try to escape these lands during their midday rally. Not much of a plan, but if that's all we've got... Open up! In the name of the revolution! What do you want, Brer Rabbit? Why all this pounding on my door? Good morning, Bill. The Garand Revolutionary Authority invites you to take part in a big rally in the village center at noon. Attendance is mandatory. Open up, Tom Thumb, in the name of the revolution! Maybe he's over at Miss Thumbelina's house again. I heard they were back together. So, Snow White wasn't as helpless as she looked. Good for her. Ouch! Are you trying to take my leg off? Sorry, I've never been handy with tools. It would help if that spell didn't keep making you flinch. 
That has nothing to do with the spell and everything to do with simple self-preservation. Give me a break. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, this isn't working. I give up. Why don't I look for something I can try to pick the lock with? I'm sorry, but I can't do Yeah, I know. Shut up. Why don't you try this key lying here? Huh? Or have you already tried it, Snow Bunny? Reynard, I was wondering when you'd show up. That key was the one Waylon made to unfasten my shackles. It won't work on his. Why not? The locks look the same. Um, well, I don't know. Do you think this could work on yours, too? I'm sorry, but I can't do anything by word or deed to help you set me free. Oh my goodness, you sneaky bastard. Did you find a loophole to let you make your own escape key? I'm sorry, but... Please stop saying that. Treat all my questions as rhetorical until I get you out of this damned... There we go. It took you long enough, you daft woman. Were you really determined to try every tool in the place before it occurred to you to try the key I left sitting right under your nose? You're allowed one rude comment due to the obvious frustrations of being held captive for so long. But don't push it. Kids, this really isn't the best time to argue. The fox is right. We need to move fast before this ridiculous animal revolution goes any further. You have a plan, princess? Possibly. Waylon, can you answer questions now? Yes. Then I need to know three things. First, how many working guns do these idiots have so far? Plenty. Every fable could use unmodified guns already has one. What about advanced communications? What do they have and what do you have here to work with? They don't have much of anything yet. Like amateur soldiers throughout history, they made the mistake of putting weapons acquisition before communications. We've got all sorts of electronics here, which I was instructed to start modifying only after I completed all the guns. What do you need? We'll get to that. Next, tell me about the big sleepers. Why do they sleep for so long? Are you asking me what spells cause them to remain asleep? Or why it's in our interest to keep such impossible to explain creatures asleep and out of sight? Neither, really. I'm asking, what will it take to wake them? Reynard, I need you to sneak back into the village as quickly as possible, and pass the word for their own good. Any fable still loyal to us better be out of town by the Big Noon Rally. Friends, free fables! The time has come at last! Soon, as soon as we can arrange transportation, we'll be moving in on the New York City Fable Town. Once we control that, We'll begin open training for the invasion of and liberation of our homelands. The time is now. Our destiny waits only for each of us to reach out and claim it. Hey, what's that? Someone's coming. It's Snow White. Say the word, Dunn, and I can drop her with one shot. Hold your fire, for Christ's sake. She's got a white flag. Everyone, drop your guns and disperse. Your so-called revolution is over. What? Why should we? But we've got you outgunned. You dumb bastards. I'm Snow White. I run Fable Town, and I'm never outgunned. Kill the barn. <laughs> Oh my god! We're fucked! If anything happens to me, burn this town, everyone in it, and anyone who tries to escape. What do we do? What can we do? My sister skunked us. Move the brothers in now. They're already on the way. Now, for the last time, drop your weapons and disperse. It's over. You lost. Go home. Can't you go faster? Miss White and Miss Red could be in trouble! We should never have stopped back there. 
Except that we had to, to get directions, after you got us lost, blue boy! It's not my fault, I'm a city dweller, who can follow all these remote country roads? Sit back and mind your monkey, you're making me nervous. And he better not be shitting all over my new leather upholstery. Look! Something's on fire! And the goddamn three brothers are awake. What's going on? Oh look, the cavalry finally arrives. What happened up here? Are you alright? We... uh... we came to rescue you. Relax, boys. We had some trouble, but it's over now. My sister and the rest of these fools are under arrest. Yeah, it seems I was a bad girl again. Be careful, though. One of the ringleaders of this fiasco slipped away in the confusion. Goldilocks. She may still be around here somewhere. And she was armed the last time I saw her. No! What happened, Colin? The short version is, I got my head chopped off and mounted, while you got yours substantially blown off by a high-powered rifle. Then, where are we now? You got me, Snow White, my sweet darling. Although, judging by the lack of set decoration, I guess we're in limbo. Or some similar waiting room to the afterlife. So, um, we're dead then? Well, considering my condition, I certainly hope so. But I'm not entirely convinced you are. You have that still holding on to her last shuddering breath look about you. Then what should I do? Well, I don't know. Have you tried waking up? Uh-huh. Welcome back, Snow. <laughs> how long what? Do you mean how long since you were shot? You've been in a coma for just over six weeks. We've all been taking turns looking after you. King Cole just handed you off to me this morning. <laughs> I don't think you should try to talk just now. If you promise to stay calm and quiet... I'll be happy to fill you in on what's happened. But only for a minute or two. Then I need to tell Dr. Swinehart that you're back among us. Understand, though, that I got most of this second hand, since I'm still not allowed up at the farm. Move back! Damn you all! The foiled revolution threatened to flare up again, in the chaos that immediately followed your shooting. Settle down, every god-cursed one of you, or I'll gun the lot of you down where you stand. But boy Blue, Bluebeard and your ex-husband quickly took control. And you, boy, don't blow that bloody horn again or I might forget you're on our side. I understand even boy Blue's monkey was of some help. Although I can't imagine how. Heave to, Chicken Little! You can't escape our swift, sure justice! But I'm innocent! I was framed! My heart was always with you guys! Honest! Once a semblance of order was restored, the loyal fables were fanned out on a search for Goldilocks. Do you really still think there's a chance that she's still nearby? She's had more than an hour to make her getaway. They found her weapon where she'd abandoned it. But by then, she was long gone. She can't hide from us forever. Where can she go? Certainly not back to the homelands. I hear the adversary wants her dead at least as much as we do. And losing Goldilocks was the least of their problems. They still had to work out what to do with the treasonous fables. And what to do with the Waken Dragon and Three Giants. I'm hungry. It was hard enough hiding them from the Mondays while they were asleep. And that's all I'm going to say for now, because I really need to report that you've finally woken up. And I suspect you need some non-coma rest. Two more weeks pass. One guest at a time, and that's final, or I'll ban all of you. If you insist, Doctor. Good morning, Bigby. Is it your turn in the babysitting rotation again? 
Every third day, whether you want me or not. How does it feel to be back on real food? If this bland mush counts as real food, then I'd just as soon they put the IV tubes back into me. I'll see if they can do better. Other than the bad cuisine, how are you? Bored out of my mind. Help me break out of here and I'm yours forever. Sorry, Snowfall. But I'm on their side. You're staying put for now. You still have a long way to go before you're officially all better. Then at least tell me the latest news. Day after day of Mundy TV is rotting what's left of my brain. Well, the war trials have started. Stay in line, no talking. Remember, if you wish to present evidence in mitigation, extenuation, or even refutation of any charges, it is up to you to mention it when you get to the front of the line. Next. King Louis of the Kipling Group of Fables. Charges. Actively aiding the revolutionaries, but not one of the ringleaders. He took part in the hunt for Snow White. Do you dispute these charges or insist on a formal trial? No, I guess not. Then I sentence you to 20 years of hard labor, reduced to 5 years conditional on your good behavior. Next. Reynard the Fox. No charges. He actively resisted the revolutionaries and thereby saved Snow White's life. For which the Fable community owes you a debt of gratitude. I hope you'll forgive us for putting off any formal recognition of your inspirational acts of heroism for another occasion. No problem. Glad to help. Next! Posey Pig, revolutionary ringleader, complicit in the murder of Colin Pig, the kidnapping and enslavement of Wayland Smith, and the attempted murder of Snow White. In my own defense, I'd like to say that- Save it for later. Posse Pig is ordered held over for formal tribunal in contemplation of capital punishment. Take this pig into custody. Next. Time moves on as it will. So, what do you want for Christmas, Miss White? How about a one-way ticket out of here? Granted. Seriously? First thing tomorrow morning? Congratulations, kiddo. You're finally sprung. We need to celebrate. Did any of you manage to sneak some champagne past the stormtroopers out there? Not a chance. Dr. Swinehart catches everything, and that fat nurse is downright scary. But, lacking liquid spirits, you can indulge in a little schadenfreude, at least. How so? This is execution day up at the farm. The revolution's ringleaders should be receiving the wages of their crimes, even as we speak. Done, pig. You also have been found guilty of high crimes against fable kind, for which the sentence is death. Jack Ketch, carry out the sentence. And try to do a better job on me than you did on my cousin, you incompetent butcher. See if you can do this one in ten chops or less. The following morning. How did the farm fables take it? About as well as could be expected considering the bad days that preceded it and made it necessary. It'll take time before things get back to normal up there. If things ever do. It'll happen, Snow. One of the advantages of near immortality is that we can learn to accept and adapt to most anything. Eventually. I suppose so. Which brings us, more or less, to the one subject that you've each made sure to avoid around me. And that would be? I know you've been protecting me until I was well enough, and I appreciate it, Bigby, but now it's time to tell me about Rose Red. When does my sister go up on the chopping block? Or has it already happened? What the hell are you talking about? Welcome back, Snow. How are you feeling? When will you be back to work? She was one of the ringleaders. Even though she joined late, she- Are you joking? I need to renegotiate my rent again. Do you seriously not know what happened up there? What she did? I thought so. She made it pretty clear to me at the time. What do you think needs further explanation? Welcome home, Miss White. 
We've missed you dearly these past months. Are you completely unaware that she saved your life? Excuse me? It all came out at her hearing. The revolutionaires had just killed Colin. And after cutting you entirely off from outside contact, it was obvious to her, if not you, that the two of you were next. It was unlikely you'd survive the night, in fact. So Rose convinced the revolutionaries that her sympathies were with them. She was reluctantly persuaded to join them, but only on the condition that they didn't outright murder you. Yeah, okay, she said something like that at one point, but I thought... She bought enough time for one of you to figure a way out of your predicament. Which you eventually did. God strike me down for a fool, Bigby. I never realized. Well is our live and breathe. If it isn't the very Wayland Smith Esquire, come down from the farm on the very first warm day of spring. Two unexpected pleasures at once. Hello, John. It's not unexpected for everyone, I'm sorry to say. Snow White summoned me down here, most likely to sack me for the way I screwed up my administration of the farm. Oh dear. Some dark business that was last year. Terrible days. Tell me about it. I don't blame you for what happened up there, Wayland. We haven't yet been corrupted by the Mundy's modern social philosophy concerning such things. The responsibility lies entirely with the perpetrators and not their victims. I'm relieved to hear that, Snow. Just the same, though, you have to realize there's no way you can resume administration of the farm. Yes, I knew one way or another I was finished there the night they first came for me. You need a boss who can continue to command their respect. I'm sorry, Wayland. Not at all. To tell you the truth, I'm actually looking forward to moving down to the city for the first time in... What, has it been a full century now? I'll approve of it if that's your decision, but I wonder if I can talk you into taking on a new task first. Yes? Let's stroll a bit. Somewhere we can talk more privately. You push. Those caves upstate are still full of Mundy firearms, right? Would you consider continuing to adapt them for use by non-human fables? Huh? But I thought you didn't support- No, I supported neither their revolution nor their methods, but their idea to create modern arms we can use against the adversary is a good one. We'd be fools not to follow up on it. You want to invade the homelands? Of course. Not today, not this year, and probably not even this decade, but someday, yes. The adversary has us vastly outnumbered in raw troop strength, and he has a hundred witches and sorcerers to every one of ours. We need an advantage in weapon systems. So, will you continue providing it to us? Only not chained up this time, of course. You'll be free to work at whatever pace suits you. I'll consider it. Thank you. Let's go this way. If you'll put me up in one of the Woodlands guest rooms tonight, we can continue this tomorrow. In the meantime, I've got a bit of a surprise for you, though I have no certainty if it's a good one or otherwise. Yes? What is it? Rose Red rode down from the farm with me. She's been doing real great work up there. But I think she's finally ready to see you face to face. She's waiting out in the truck, in case you're not up to seeing her yet. Go on in. She's waiting for you in the chapel. That small one back in- I know the way. So, here I am. The prodigal returns and all that. Come in. Um, I... Uh... Obviously, just in time for the latest in a never-ending string of awkward moments between estranged sisters. I hope not. At least, I hope we can work through it someday and maybe get back to- the way we were so long ago. Do you really think that's likely? Or even possible? Yes, I do. Because I forgave you long ago for what you did. Oh, how perfectly noble of you. But what if I haven't forgiven you yet? For what? 
What did I ever do to you to deserve so many years of open scorn? Isn't it obvious even to one as oblivious as you? I guess you'll have to spell it out for me. Look at you! You're alive! I was standing right next to you as half of your head was blown all over my fucking shirt. Your skull and brains were all... and yet you got better. How is that even possible? I don't know. Unfortunately, I do. The Mondays adore you by the millions, by the hundreds of millions. They keep making their god-awful animated movies and writing their endless children's stories about you. So you can't die. They'll never let you. But who remembers me? Not one in a million of them. It used to be Snow White and Rose Red. Now it's just Snow White, period. All alone, no sister needed or desired, thank you so very much. If it had been me who'd taken that bullet, I'd be dead as a doornail. And how is that my fault? When we were young, back in the cabin, we pledged we'd be together forever. You and me against the world. Remember? But the moment your pretty Prince Charming came along, you rode off with him without so much as a backward glance. It wasn't like that. I sent for you to come live with us. Eventually. And that was my great crime. It took me too long to send for you, and that's why you seduced him and ruined my marriage? All to punish me? Bingo. Fine. Then you had your revenge long ago. Why are the claws still out after all these years? Because you're still the popular one, and I'm fed up with living in your shadow. Then do something about it. I already have. I've been working up at the farm, first to work off my public service debt. That was finished at least six months ago. And then because it kept me away from you. Surprise. First I found out I was good at it, then found out I liked it. So all that's left is to formalize the arrangement. You need a new farm administrator? You? Why not me? Wayland is out, and I can do the job. You run the city fable town, and I run the farm. So at long last, we're back to being equals again. I can handle that, can you? As my first official duty, I've already come up with a solution to our giants and dragon problem. They don't want to go back to sleep for hundreds of years, and who can blame them? But in their present form, we could never keep them out of sight, and just keeping them fed is already threatening to strip the farm bare. So what we have to do is make a sacrifice in the short term to prevent a disaster in the long run. Okay, listen up, kids, because this is what we're going to do. Do you guys know what a permanent transformation spell is? All you have to do is authorize the use of the discretionary spending budget for both Fable Towns for the rest of this year and probably the next. We have to buy a very expensive set of enchantments. And soon enough. Ladies and gentlemen, important visiting and dignitaries. Since the originals are dead, meet the Three Little Pigs Part 2. Johnny, Donnie, and Lonnie, formerly Giants of the Renown. So where's our cottage? Well done, Rose. Wonderful. You did it. The Mundy's need for the three little pigs to match their beloved story is satisfied. And not a one of them would know or care that they're different piggies with different names. What about Clarathea the dragon? Clara is now my new best friend and enforcer. Enforcer? How? Show them, sweetie. <laughs> We decided to hold on to one of her more advantageous dragon qualities. No more revolutions here. Charming. And later, as soon as she could politely slip away, when she could hold them back no longer, Snow White removed herself to a quiet private place and let the tears out. She cried for all the killing and terror of the past year at the farm. And she cried for the sister she had lost so many years, and perhaps found again. But most of all, she cried for the loss of a true wise friend, called Colin Piggy.